So Jason, man, thank you for jumping on. This has been sort of a long time coming. We've been hanging out, getting to know each other for, for a few years. Man, it's probably. been two and a half, three years at this point. Definitely. And how did all that come about? I think it was over Instagram from what I remember. I had started working at Crucial, taking over kind of the, the Instagram content. I noticed you guys were using our stuff. Loved the content and the projects you guys had been producing. It was like really in line with where I wanted to take like our brand. And I figured, you know what? Let's hit them up, see see what's good. And from there, I don't know, I, I feel like it just kind of flourished. Right? Absolutely. But uh, yeah, give everyone, everyone watching a bit of a background of yourself. I currently am the brand activation manager for Crucial Memory, which is a consumer company of Micron Technology. But before I ended up in the tech world, I went to be a photographer. Originally thinking I was going to be a sports photographer, and then I just kind of fell into the studio life, you know, working on a lot of like product photography, food photography. What age did you start photography? Actually, BMX is what got me into photography. I ended up getting injured back in, shit, I think it was like 2006. And basically got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I'm never going to be able to be a professional BMX racer. So what's the next best thing I could do? And I kind of picked up photography just to be at the track and, you know, take photos of my buddies racing or... um, I feel like that's such like a, just a skater mindset like at entry level that's how like so many skaters 100%. get into filming like a, a friend of ours Chris Ray that's exactly how he fell into videography is literally just through his skate culture and wanting to film his friends yeah and that honestly that's that's pretty much what happened with me like we had our our group of buddies and I immediately just became the creative dude with the camera and you know fast forward a couple of years and I took on a gig with USA BMX out of Arizona to go in and run their entire uh, print publication for them. Um, that was your first taste of, of marketing and, and sort of being a part of a brand, like helping develop a brand? I ended up getting a chance to go work for a company, uh, Fly Racing, or their parent company, Western Power Sports. And then I got a chance to go into their marketing department and basically revamp their entire social wow. media presence for the eight brands that they own. And you know, ultimately what it allowed me to realize is that leveraging content to elevate your brands is where my skill set excels because I really like the analytical side outside of just being a creative. What was the first position you started with at Crucial? I went in as a social media manager, but it was just for Instagram. I, I think it was a a turning point for my career a little bit because it made me realize how much I actually enjoy traditional marketing or I, I guess in this world, digital marketing, right? It's like, yeah, your, your day to day of like getting content out or, you know, creating content is a fairly small portion to having to dive into the analytics side and seeing like, okay, what is a community? What exactly makes people want to follow us? What type of content do they want to engage with, right? And ultimately, what I learned from that is that we're not here to talk about ourselves. We're here to build a community and get people excited about us our brand and how we're connecting with them. You know, what, what value are we bringing to their lives every day? Not just, Hey, buy our product because you know, you get good performance at a good price, right? Social isn't about just being a sales tool. Like it, it can absolutely be a sales driver, but at the end of the day, it's about building a community of like-minded individuals that just want to, you know, be educated, entertained, inspired. And, how impactful is the power of community that you guys are doing? Massive. Um, you know, I think that t- to me, community is the number one driver of social. I call it building brand advocacy, right? Or brand champions, if you will. Like, I would rather take somebody who likes to engage with our content and build them up to a brand advocate than just, you know, post it and get. 500 likes on something like I don't give a shit about vanity metrics I care about how the community feels about the brand like one thing we we started measuring this year a lot more is brand sentiment where does our brand sentiment online rank against our competitors how are you measuring that so the way that we measure it um, is a couple of ways. We we leverage social listening to see what's being said about us in the market. And that, that's also kind of where brand sentiment comes into play. In, in what um, place? Like in comments or Yeah, so it's, articles? It's, 
it's through comments. It's through uh, just like AI driven uh, concept performance. So for example, we use a tool called Amplify to do all of our social management and they have a content hub inside of there that uses AI driven technology to rank your um, content performance. So it'll basically give it like an A through F rating and that's solely driven off the type of engagement that's that's occurring. So one thing I've always been very very proud of my team on, and um, you know the direction I've been able to to take our social presence from what data does tell us, we have the highest engagement rates, mm-hmm. and it's you know mostly mostly I'd say probably ninety percent organic, you know, and, and to me like. That's a huge win. If people are excited to engage with the content, that means you're doing something right. You may not get those people to comment and you know have a conversation with you, but they might save that piece of content or they'll share it with their community. And that's ultimately helping spread the awareness of your brand. What's an example that you've seen recently of a brand building community right? I think Stanley Drinkware is by far the biggest one that I've seen. You know, there's a a gal that had her car catch on fire and had a Stanley Drinkware tumbler in it. And these guys took it to the next level, like so much so that the CEO got involved. And not only did they give this lady probably every Stanley product that exists, they bought her a new car. Like they didn't need to do that. But if you think about it from like a business decision, like it's incredibly smart. Absolutely. I love that it's like extending the narrative. Like it was just about, hey, the cup made it. And now there's this whole other story that comes out a few days or a week later, building on the same thing that could would have cost hundreds of thousands to get that kind of reach and story out there. You've impressed millions and millions of people who honestly in the world we've been living in lately need to see some goodwill, you know? And I, I think that that's something that's incredibly impactful for a brand is to be able to to take the step and be that company, be the people that are actively trying to help the community. What are three small, tangible things that you've noticed to build community? The biggest one is be present. If you're just there to post content and then you kind of dip out, which I see a lot of brands do, where there could be hundreds of comments and you don't see a single response from a brand, like, Why are you there? Because at that point, you're just shouting to the audience. You're not trying to engage with them, right? So to me, that's by far the biggest one is you need to be present. The second one, this is one that I think varies between business and business. If you're going to have a social program, you need to invest in a community manager. What's one more small, tangible thing that people can be doing and small businesses can be doing to help build community and strengthen community? Tapping into the culture of your audience and really get them involved in the business, right? Like, if you, especially a small business where you don't, frankly, small businesses don't have anything to lose. Like in the sense of you can take more risks than say a publicly traded company where the wrong risk can take your stock price, right? You, you can know, also move a lot faster. Like Oh, 100%. There's no roadblocks. That's road the blocks. one thing you know about corporate is how slow things can be. Yeah, but you get to make 100%. a daily decision of your direction. Yeah, you know, and I I think that by tapping into your community and getting them involved in the business is a big thing. So like, even if it's something like, hey, like we've got a product idea, like what do you guys think about this? That can be incredibly powerful because if you're able to build the relationship with the community and show that you trust their opinion and you're in a way leveraging them to help drive the future of your business, like who's not going to be stoked about that? It's that feeling of inclusion. And I think that that's what brands need to really focus on is how do you include the audience in your business? Um, Because a lot of times we miss that. Mm -hmm. Now, on the topic of like the partnerships that you've been building at Crucial, tell us more about that, like your ambassador program. To me, I've always looked at it as a a two-way relationship. It's not about like, what can you do for us? It's about what can we do for each other? I have always felt that longer term partnerships are more beneficial uh, than just kind of one-off deals yeah. where it's like, okay, here's here's a check, make me a video, let's move on, right? I mean, that's, you understand and, that world because yeah. that's that that's what you guys deal with. And that's exactly um, the same on our end as well. On the creator side, I feel like that's what it needs to be. Like you need to really show up and 
prove that you want a long-term relationship with a brand. The brand is always going to have more products. We're always going to be in more need of their products. In, and how can we fulfill that for them? A hundred percent. If you've got a new product that's coming to market and you have a good relationship with, you know, a uh, whether it's a full-blown influencer that's got millions of followers or even like a micro-influencer um, who's just trying to build their business but is might be a creative professional, like a, a designer by trade, right? Pull them into the fold and be like, hey, like, what is going to work with this? How should we market this to the community through content, right? Do you find yourself finding and scouting these ambassadors or are they all reaching out to you? We have a mix. So ultimately the process is if we're doing the reach out, one, why are we reaching out? And two, what are we looking to accomplish? Like if I want to show off the speed of one of our portables and how it can help with editing workflow, I'm going to go to a creator like you guys, right? Because that's the type of content that you produce. You produce a ton of behind the scenes stuff and you know, you've done some workflow content. That's what I need people to see. And because ultimately your audience is coming to you to look for that expertise. And that's the type of person that I want to influence. Mm-hmm. And it's right? such a balance of like, we need that content too. And so many creators need to realize how much they need that content to put it out themselves. Like people want to see your workflow, no matter who you are. It's not just about us providing that to the brand. It's literally about us creating that for ourselves as well. And that's kind of the the level we want to put all of our work, partner work at is like, would we create this for ourselves? And if not, we probably won't do it. Honestly, that's the number one thing that I look for when I'm I'm trying to find creators to work with is Does their content match what we're trying to do? I really wish we had the capacity to respond to every single person. And there is not enough man hours in the day for my team to do that, right? I think that's one thing that also discourages a lot of creators in reaching out to brands is they get ghosted a lot. Um, Talking about being ghosted, like the amount of no's that we have to get as creatives, people don't understand, like they get hurt. You know, no still hurt, like I get no's every day. No, the the price was too high. No, the timing's not right. No, the direction's changed. No, we're not doing in that city anymore. The more you put yourself out there, the more those no's come in. And a lot of people will just see those little success moments where something goes viral, but they don't understand how many times something flops. Oh, 100%. I think the word no is is unique because a lot of people just take that as immediate rejection. And mm-hmm. it, may not, it may not actually be that. It, 100%. It could, yeah. It, it's easily just one of those things like, hey, man, it's just not the right time, right? It's, and It's all timing. Every, It's all timing. Um, and so many times there's other people that are like, no, we do we do all this in-house. Like we, we literally have no need for your services. Six months later, we get an email that, yeah, they're not doing that internally anymore. They need something, a bigger production, which has a lot more dollars behind it. Um, and we're like, great. So I'm actually so glad that we never connected on that smaller project that we might have really not needed or wanted to do. Um, so there are so many times as well where that no pays off in the long run. Yeah, 100%. With your work that you've done with creators, and do you have any advice for creators that are wanting to work with with partners? Like, maybe not DM the brand and say, "I want to take your job," but like, what <laughs> what kind of advice would you give creators out there um, that want to partner with more brands and that want to do more more branded content? It's always about you know building the right relationships. At the end of the day, like your if you're a creator, your content is mostly being seen on social. So what value can you add? You need to find the right people to talk to. Don't just mass, like go on LinkedIn and find everybody that works for the company and hit them all up. Be calculated about the people that you reach out to. And then when you do reach out, like don't just sit there and be like, hey, do you want to collab, right? Like that's very basic. It's it's not really an open-ended question. It's, it's easy to get told no mm-hmm. um, or even get ignored for that matter. Um, you know, I think to me, you need to be open-ended and you need to show the value you're bringing. You might be able to come in and say, hey, like I've been following your guys' brand for a long time. This is who I am. This is what I do. Here's an idea for a project. Let's say people in your industry, so people that are going through the world of marketing and brands in a more corporate structure, have you any advice for people that are are coming up? Take risks. Um, I have done nothing but take risks my whole career, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. There's a couple that have blown up in my face um, quite dramatically, but I think that one of the hardest things that you 
have to do as a marketer is one, you have to be able to go into a team and kind of sit back and learn for a little bit before you can make waves. But I think that you also have to give yourself enough credit to put yourself out there. Marketing and specifically brand marketing is a lot about ideas. And some of our best idea sessions have come off of people being vulnerable and being willing to speak up. That's awesome. Well, man, that that covers everything I wanted to chat about today. Thank you so much for taking so much of your time out of your day to make this happen. You know, you guys do some incredible work. And uh, frankly, if it wasn't for Instagram, we wouldn't be here today. (laughs) Absolutely. That's exactly right. You've been so insightful. It's so good to to chat to people that are at that level and they really give a shit about what they're doing and what they're putting out in this world and, and creating and that really understand the importance of community and relationship. I super appreciate it. And man, you've um you come a long way and you've got a long way to go as well. We're here for here for the party, man. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you again. Uh, I'll, I'll chat to you soon. All right. Sounds good, man. We'll talk to you soon. See you, brother. Bye. Later. Bye.